Howdy y'all and welcome back. Today we're heading back to the wild wild west where we'll be going over some of the reasons why you, yes you, wouldn't be able to make it. Now don't be alarmed, I don't know you personally, but I'm just gonna go on a limb here. And if you think you'd survive these, let me know in the comments. Because trust me, you're braver than I am. You know the saying, pick your poison? Well in the wild west that phrase was oftentimes taken quite literally by saloons. One saloon in the Sierra Nevada in particular had a specialty drink called tarantula juice, which sounds disgusting as is, but only gets worse. Ingredients in this thirst quencher included but were not limited to strychnine and wood grain alcohol distilled from turpentine. So why does it have the name tarantula juice? Well this chemical concoction would give the drinker a reaction like no other, usually involving rapid bursts of energy along with skin crawling sensations down their arms said to feel like tarantulas. Oh and then they'd suffer from muscle spasms and sometimes lock jaw. In case you were curious, strychnine is a pesticide which is primarily used to get rid of birds and small mammals. But if you weren't up for it, that wasn't it when it came to dastardly drinks. Maybe you wanted to chug down some Tanglefoot, 40 Rod, Teos Lightning, Red Eye, or Coffin Varnish, made with the finest raw alcohol, burnt sugar, and chewing tobacco. Picture this, you've been out in the hot Nevada sun all day and you decide to cool off by hitting up a saloon and grabbing yourself some tarantula juice. Yeah, good luck getting anything else done today. Oh, and uh, if you said no, have fun in your bar fight. Yeehaw. Camels are very much not from North America, but they weren't once confined to zoos in the United States. In fact, during the days of the Wild West, they ravaged those who traveled through the Arizona Territory. If you think about it, there's no animal that would make traversing through the desert easier than a camel. The only hitch? There ended up being so many that once they realized that they couldn't take care of that many, they set them free into the wild, where they're not from. But not all of these camels suffered the same fate. And just a heads up, you won't like where this is going. There were reports of camels shoved off of cliffs, fighting for the Confederates, and ravaging through people lawns until each and every one was captured at best and sold at auction but there was one camel who stood out from the rest its name red ghost it's confirmed to have ended the life of one and came close with others it was also rumored to stand 30 feet tall one eyewitness claims they saw it devour a grizzly bear this dangerous beast roamed the arizona territory for years and no one knows exactly why it was so angry or dangerous but when a rancher named eagle creek hit it with his rifle the wild west breathed a sigh of relief because they knew the Red Ghost was gone. Now you might think that the rampant duels and willy-nilly firing of firearms, that the number one cause for someone to lose their life in the Wild West was by bang through their chest. I mean, Red Dead Redemption would have you thinking that. But instead of a bullet, it was something else going through the body. Sickness. And while a bullet can only take one life at a time, unless you're really talented, cholera could take multiple. And that it did. And it came from something everybody needs. Water. While those in the Wild West knew how to get disinfectant for diseases such as cholera, it wasn't all that easy getting your hands on it. And if you weren't fighting cholera, it could have been smallpox, dysentery, measles, pneumonia, scurvy, or mountain fever. And while yes, there was the beginning of some modern medicines around that time, most physicians weren't accessible to it. And so more common remedies included leeches, cold baths, blistering agents, and other remedies that science has no proof of being effective. Around this time, snake oil salesmen started popping up as well. And as you're about to find out, they were quite profitable. Now look here, would I ever lie to you? For the low price of $20, this oil will rid you of everything that troubles you. Come on, give it a try. And if you believe me, congrats. You purchased snake oil. So what was snake oil? Well, it was the new hip craze in the Wild West, as many cultures in Asia had used it for years as medicine, and so with the influx of immigrants from those countries, with them came the snake oil. While there's no genuine scientific evidence that snake oil helps in any ways, cowboys were trusting, and in a time where they were looking for anything to help with the multitude of illnesses, they turned to these remedies. For as much as we know snake oil now is a scam, I mean, it's synonymous with the term, we have to give a little bit of credit to the marketing geniuses behind it. And just a little bit, not a lot, yet that's enough. And think about the cultural impact that snake oil has had. I mean, it even spawned a show with David Spade. And uh, I'd say that's pretty huge. Now here's one of the trickiest parts about living in the Wild West. You gotta get there. And if you're traveling with a group, yeah, odds are not all of you are gonna make it. Now I don't know if any of you have played the electric, fast-paced game known as the Oregon Trail, but here's a shocker. It was based on the real Oregon Trail, and the road was just as treacherous. Britannica believes that around 40,000 people traveled along the path from the 1840s to the 1860s, and about one in 10 didn't complete the journey. You'd have to deal with dehydration, starvation, diseases, harsh weather, rattlesnake bites, and usually it would stem from one thing. Oops, uh, your card is broken, and now you're stuck. Good luck being alone without any significant means of transportation in the middle of the desert. You've only got a couple days of food and haven't seen another person for miles. Decision time. Now imagine how easier it would be if they had an ATV or a car. Being a miner in the Wild West wasn't as easy as crafting a diamond pickaxe and watching out for creepers. It was a whole lot scarier and it led to a lot more loss of life, yet even scarier than Minecraft. 
For many people in the Wild West, the prospect of mining brought with it a lot of positives, and the negatives were often ignored. Negatives such as, uh, I don't know, losing your life? But think about it, you can make significant money if you found some gold. That's a tough choice if you're strapped for cash. While there's very limited resources on just how many miners perished in the 1800s, most of what we do know in terms of loss of life came from newspaper headlines such as Cheyenne Weekly Leader reporting that 38 miners had lost their life in a Wyoming cave explosion in March of 1881. Sadly, headlines like these continue today, but if you think about about the advancements that have been made technologically in the past 150 years, I think it's safe to say that it's a little bit safer now. Now that's not to say it isn't dangerous, because unlike Derek Zoolander's father, I am far too afraid to ever step foot in a mine unless it's on a computer. Have you heard of the Great Emu War? It took place in the 1930s in Australia and pitted man versus bird, and bird won. Well, it wasn't the only man against animal battle as the United States Army set their sights on their animal target, buffaloes. In fact, the army paid people to head west and slaughter as many as they could, and paid settlers to do the same. So what gives? Why would you want to eliminate a huge creature that will leave you alone if you do the reasonable thing and let it live its life? Well, buffalo played an important part in Native Americans' lives at that point, being a major source of food for them, and when the Native Americans wouldn't let the US come and take their land for themselves, they decided to do the incredibly reasonable thing and completely deplete one of their major food resources. And so thanks to the US government, the buffalo population went from around 30 million in the early 1800s to 256 in 1889. No, not 256,000, 256 and they were all in captivity. Yeah, good job USA. Sticking with Buffalo, they served an entirely different purpose. I mean, it was kind of them in a way. Take a look at this photo of the Great Plains. Do you see a tree? No, you don't. But as I just mentioned, you know what they had a lot of before wiping them all out? Buffaloes. And do you know what buffaloes leave behind? Dung. And so what else can you add to use as fuel for your fire? I mean, there's no wood anywhere. So yeah, now you've gathered around the poop fire, singing merry songs, and having a hoot and a half. And as gross as it was, and I guess still does continue to be, it gets the job done. Known as either prairie chips or meadow pies, which for the record sound way too much like a delicious snack, these were definitely plentiful. And if you can muster up the courage, I mean, they're pretty easy to acquire. But there was an art form to picking up the perfect meadow pie. I mean, you couldn't get one that was too ripe. You had to wait until it had dried in the sun before collecting it. And that's enough of that. Sadly, buffaloes weren't the only thing losing their lives in great numbers, as bodies were dropping left and right, but not everywhere. Contrary to popular belief, most of the West was civil, but one area sticks out from the rest, Dodge City, Kansas. The Ohio State University's Criminal Justice Research Center did a deep dive into the area during the years of 1876 and 1885, and during that time, residents had a 1 in 61 chance of meeting their end via another person's hands, or firearms. To put that into bigger numbers, that's about 165 per 100,000, in comparison to the 7.8 per 100,000 from 2020, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, you can see that it was happening a bit too much. So yeah, according to the Ohio State report, even in Oregon, which had the lowest minimum rate discovered in the American West, was about 30 per 100,000 adults per year, and an adult faced at least a 1 in 208 chance of someone ending their life. I know gambling was rampant in those times, but I don't really like those odds. There could be a lot of time alone during the Wild West. And picture this, some people hadn't seen another person in a long time and were probably desperately craving affection from another human being. And so painted ladies, soiled doves, ladies of the night, whatever you want to call them, became rampant in a lot of towns. But the sad truth was that the industry was almost a death sentence for everyone involved. In Christopher Knowlton's book, Cattle Kingdom, The Hidden History of the Cowboy West, he took a look into the industry and showed that once women got in, there was little to no chance of getting out. Venereal diseases were rampant, and while almost all went to whatever measures were necessary to keep themselves healthy, oftentimes it just did more damage. Workers would suffer from addiction to the medicines they took, and in the end, it was often a race between all the different things to see what would end your life first. To this day, it's unclear how many lost their life due to these diseases, mainly because no one wanted to know that it was how they passed, so most certificates list other reasons. Yeah, that's not a fun time. Well, I've officially yeed my last haul. Thanks for watching the video, and again, don't forget to leave a comment below below if you think you could survive in the wild west. Or just tell me I'm a baby. I can take it. Thanks for watching Bumblebee. I'm Ethan, and I'll see you in the next one.